In my opinion, the best budget lens for video is the newer 35mm 1.7 lens. It's $70 and has super impressive images coming from this lens. But keep watching this video to find out everything you need to know before buying it. You gotta just press record. My name is Nolan Molt with Think Media and on this channel we talk about camera gear for YouTubers and I know a lot of us are on a budget and so when I found this lens for only $70 I had to pick it up and try it out. Now though this isn't a perfect lens, I think it's completely worth the $70 to buy it. And this can go onto the Sony camera, which is what I've been using on my Sony a6600, but you can get an option for a Canon EF mount or micro four thirds mount, and all of those links are gonna be in the description below. Let's start off this review with the most important thing, the image. Now this lens just gives you a beautiful image. I leave it wide open at 1.7. I get that beautiful background blur. And typically when you find a lens in this price range, when you have the lens wide open at 1.7, that's what's gonna get you the blurry background. But sometimes with these cheaper lenses, it's very soft. And so it almost looks like everything is out of focus because it's just not sharp enough. But I did not find that to be the case with this lens. When I was shooting outside, you could see that things were in focus, things were sharp, and all these shots that you're seeing are at f1.7. Now I didn't notice any sort of vignetting on this lens, which is great. And it kind of gives like a vintage style. And I just love the images that I was getting out of this lens. You make me feel so good. So let's go over the specs. To start off, of course, this is $70 like I mentioned, but you can get it even cheaper on Amazon if you wanna pick up one that is used. Now the build quality is pretty good on this lens. I mean, everything is metal except for this bottom plastic piece which you take off before putting it onto the camera, but everything is metal, everything uh, moves really smoothly, and I haven't noticed any sort of weird things with the build quality. I've noticed that it's been standing up pretty good over these past few weeks. The next thing you need to know about this camera is that it is fully manual. So with these kind of lenses, when you put it onto your camera and you connect it, it doesn't electronically connect to your camera. So you're not going to be able to see any sort of f-stop or uh, use autofocus. All those things you are going to manually do on the lens. And so if you turn this piece here, you can manually change your f-stop and it gives you the numbers. So it's really easy to see uh, exactly, you know, what number you're at. And then with the focus, it's the same thing. There's numbers on there and you're just gonna manually focus. So if you're a YouTuber and you're maybe sitting in front of a camera like I am right now, this lens would be perfect. And we actually use this lens on a video where we're talking about the best Canon 90D vlog setup. And I thought that the image turned out great. Both the aperture and the focus rings turn very smoothly, which makes it a lot easier when focusing. And the focus throw is actually pretty long on this lens, which can be a good thing. So I'm gonna show you what that means if you're not sure what focus throw is. It basically just means what the minimum, so right here I can't turn the lens anymore. This is the minimum focus distance. And if I turn it, see how much I'm turning that? That's the maximum distance. So there's a lot of room there, and that actually makes it easier in a lot of cases to really nail your focus and to get those manual focus shots, maybe when you're shooting B-roll, you're out on the beach, and it just makes the focusing a little bit easier for you. The glass elements inside the lens are multi-coated, which is gonna help with reducing flares when you're shooting outside, or maybe you're pointing at some lights, and reducing those flares are gonna help you get a cleaner image. Now, when I was outside, I was shooting with an ND filter, and if you wanna do that too, there's a 49 millimeter thread size where you can connect your ND filter, or if you're like me, maybe you already have an ND filter, you can get some step up rings from 49 millimeter to whatever millimeter your ND filter is. Using an ND filter outside is really a must for video and especially on a lens like this, if you wanna get that blurry background, definitely use an ND filter. But if you're not sure what an ND filter is or a step up ring and you're kinda lost, click the card right here and check out that video 
on ND filters. The minimum focus distance on this lens is one foot or 0.3 meters. And that just means how close you can get a subject in focus. So if you move it closer than a foot, it just won't be able to focus any closer. That's about normal for every lens unless you get a macro lens. And so one foot is a pretty good distance for this 35 millimeter lens. Now, before we get to these last couple things about this lens that you need to know before buying it, like this video and comment down below, what kind of lens are you using right now on your YouTube videos? This is a 35 millimeter prime lens and prime lens basically just means you can't zoom. So it's stuck at 35 millimeters. And I'm gonna show you what 35 millimeter looks like, you know, how far away from the subject the camera needs to be in order to get that kind of medium shot for YouTube videos. 35 millimeters isn't a wide angle lens and it's not really like a tight telephoto lens. It's sitting right in the middle, which makes it really versatile. You can kind of back up, move your camera far away to get that wide angle shot or you can bring it in closer to get your close-ups. And 35 millimeter is basically, if I could choose one focal length to shoot a short film or a video, I'd probably choose a 35 millimeter. A few great things about this lens is that it goes down to 1.7 so you can get that blurry background and it really helps you kind of stand out in your shot. The other thing that I love about this lens is just how sharp it really is, even wide open at that 1.7. There's no image stabilization on this lens, so keep that in mind when shooting. Shooting. If you have a tripod or monopod, that's gonna be probably best case scenario. If you're shooting handheld, you can still get some really good images. You'll just have to be careful to kind of hold your camera closer to your chest more instead of out here where it could shake more. And if you're shooting slow motion, that's gonna help a lot with bringing those jitters down so that it looks a lot smoother. I think this lens is great for YouTubers who are sitting in front of the camera and they're not really moving around a lot and they're just sitting still talking straight to the camera. You wanna get that blurry background, you want it to look more cinematic, but you don't wanna spend a lot of money, then definitely pick this lens up. I also think if you're a videographer and you're looking to shoot some B-roll or you're just looking to get some really cool images for a budget option, then this is definitely the go-to lens. It's super impressive, has great images. For $70, I think it's a must-have in your camera. Hammer bag.